Hello, and welcome to the Lore Developer Portal Bits, Bytes, and Business series. Today's segment will be setting up your Lore Edge reference tracker. In today's Lora Edge reference tracker video, we're going to start by doing a review of the Lora Edge reference tracker device. Then we'll go through the setup steps, starting with downloading and setting up the Android application that does the Lora Edge config. We'll then move on to connecting to the reference tracker uh, with that application. We'll then go claim the device on LoraCloud.com. We'll come back to the application to do the tracker setup and finally enable transmit on the tracker, allowing it to connect to a Lora WAN network. The Lora Edge reference tracker has multiple design elements. At its heart is the LR1110 with Lora Basics Modem E firmware. In addition to that, the hardware has both an FR4 and patch antenna for GNSS. It has a built-in FR4 antenna for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, as well as a sub-gigahertz antenna for uh, LoRa communications. In addition to those antennas, it has an accelerometer for sensing whether there's motion or no motion, a Hall effect sensor, which is used to trigger uh, the BLE pairing, uh, the core uh, micro unit is the STM32. It has the BLE or Bluetooth 5.0 integrated directly. Uh, it is sealed uh, with water and dust resistance uh, in its housing. It has two half AA batteries, also known as the ER14250. Uh, and all of these uh, design aspects are available as design files for download. The features include uh, six PCB layers for the, uh, the main board. The regions supported uh, cover many of the worldwide uh, regions as defined in the LoRaWAN regional uh, parameter specification. It supports two different uh, output power, both for high power and high efficiency, and the uh, receive and transmit RXTX uh, for the LoRa is handled through a RF switch. Numerous applications could be handled with a device of this type, including asset location re recovery and trace, uh, inventory management, and asset loss of theft pre prevention. The first step in the setup will be to download and install the Lora Edge Config Android application from Google Play. We will start the installation process by going to the Play Store icon, selecting it, and searching for Lora Edge Config. and clicking install. It will download and install the Lora Edge config application. When it is finished installing, you will click open to start the application. You'll need to scroll through uh, the end user license agreement uh, read any terms and conditions that are important to you. And at the end of it, uh, select um, uh, the I accept uh, to accept the terms and conditions for the program. Uh, we are going to choose uh, later uh, on this selection for the Almanac URL. However, it will automatically update to the regional correct setting for you if you do the change now. So you can either do later or change now. Uh, and uh, we're going to do later in this particular case. The first thing we're going to do is go to the settings. Um, this is where um, all of the high level uh, settings for the uh, installation will go. Um, you can switch the inspector mode either into basic or advanced. Advanced will show you more options when it comes time to connect uh, to the device. Uh, you can do everything uh, that you need to do in basic mode. 
Uh, we're going to switch to advanced mode in this particular case. It does not change your settings panel at all. It's only when you're connected to the device. Um, in the GNSS, uh, you'll have your um, specific connection to uh, the Almanac. The Almanac is used for assisted GNSS to improve uh, the acquisition time and power. Uh, and it'll give you also the latest Almanac date. You can click on it to make sure that it's the latest Almanac. The same thing will be true uh, for the Modem E firmware uh, and the uh, um, the tracker application firmware, the thing that runs on the MCU. Um, you can check that those are the latest uh, installed version by uh, just clicking on those uh, those areas and finding uh, that they are the most recent uh, versions of the code that are available. Uh, when they are uh, updated, uh, you'll be able to click on that and download the updated versions, which then will become available for your reference tracker. The next step in the setup is to connect the reference tracker to the application we just downloaded. Uh, to do this, we'll activate the BLE with a magnet and then uh, use that connected uh, application to get the Devi UI, in other words, the unique identifier of the reference tracker, uh, and the pin code uh, from the interface uh, on the uh, config application. To pair the tracking device with the BLE of the phone, first pick up the device, inspect both it and the magnet, looking for the not side on the magnet, there are two connector sides, one with a round hole, the other with an oval hole. On the oval hole side, take the magnet with the notch side down, place it against the oval hole side. That will cause an LED to blink, which puts it in BLE pairing mode. Once you are in Bluetooth pairing mode on the device, return to the lower edge config application and select the radio button in the lower right hand corner. This will show a tracker at the very top. Click on that tracker configuration. The device will pair with the phone and download information uh, about the tracker to, the, uh, to your uh, display. It gives you things like the dev UI, the join UI, pin code, and configuration information. At this point, what you want to do is capture the device EUI, the join EUI, and pin code for use on the LoRa cloud configuration. The next step will be to claim your device on LoRa cloud Dot com. To claim your device, go to lauracloud.com. There you'll see the invitation to log in on re or register. Uh, if you have not created an account in the past, uh, go ahead and create your free Laura Cloud account. Uh, I've already created an account and it's asking me to sign in, so I will. Once you sign in, uh, proceed to Laura Cloud Device Join. From there, go to Devices. On your devices, you'll claim an individual device. Using the information you had gathered previously, you will uh, input uh, the LoRaWAN device EUI in for the chip UI, which is the same, the same when uh, you first receive the device. That will be this number from our previous example. I think I'm missing a number here. Okay, there's zero there. That will copy the chip UI and the device UI. Add in the PR, the PIN code. You 
you can also add in the joint UI. And claim the device. For a successful claim, it will give you the feedback that it was successfully claimed. Now you'll be able to use the joint server with this device. Next, we will go back into the config app to do the final tracker setup. If you've become disconnected uh, between the tracking device and your phone, you can reattach the two by again applying the magnet and clicking on the sim symbol in the lower right hand corner and bringing up the tracker application. The tracker config is now here on screen. One of the things you'll want to do is either enable or disable the GNSS capability. If you want to see it working uh, with GNSS, uh, you want to click the checkbox. Uh, also, uh, be uh, sure uh, that you're utilizing the device outside with a good view of the sky. It doesn't have to be a perfectly clear view of the sky, but a good view of the sky is necessary uh, to get a good fix in GNSS. Uh, the Wi-Fi feature can be used either indoors or outdoors. The uh, critical uh, information on this screen is to update uh, the GNSS assistance position. You do that by clicking on the latitude and longitude and entering uh, the decimal uh, latitude and longitude for your location with negative signs uh, representing west longitudes. Uh, this will allow you to have a, an approximate location for your, um, uh, for your first estimate of GNSS. This is important for aiding purposes. This uh, assistance information does not have to be particularly accurate. It just has to be accurate to about 150 kilometers. Uh, once that is done, uh, your device should be set up and ready to go with your GNSS feature and Wi-Fi feature enabled. The last step you'll want to do is enable the transmission from the device through LoRaWAN by turning off airplane mode.